Welcome back. This is part four of the Superbase AI Hackathon. Blog post in front of us should be in the YouTube video description so you can read more about it. Basically, this is a hackathon, a 10 day long hackathon <clears throat> focused around AI. AI is so hot right now. Um, in particular, GPT is really, really hot right now. And I'm leveraging this opportunity to build something that matters to me. It solves a real problem. This is not a toy project. And what we're building, it's called Rect. R-E-C-T, as in a rectangle. What's the point? There are four points. That's why we call it Rect. The four points of this are the four things that will be output. So it's taking in my social media content, primarily uh, YouTube shorts. It's taking that in. It's transcripting them, it's doing some AI magic, and it's outputting four things, flashcards. What does my content do? My content helps people learn to code, mostly. And so we want to create tools that help people learn to code in an interactive way, an even better way than the social media content itself. So we're gonna make flashcards, we're gonna make quizzes. Third is slides, and fourth is a conversational partner, uh, a chat GPT tailored to learning to code, basically. Tony says, hi from Canada. How's it going? Thanks for being here. In the previous video, we were able to create the flashcards and the quizzes. Uh, I don't think we ever made the GUI for the quiz, but we got the quiz JSON data. <clears throat> um, Today, I want to get all four outputs. Um, and I want to focus in particular on the conversational partner uh, because I think that's the hard problem. I think that's, first of all, it's the last of the four. So if we get there, we're complete in a sense. And it's also the most difficult of the four. And let's go over the reasons why it's the last and why it's the most difficult. Hello from South Sudan. Thank you for being here. Why is it the last? The reason I would like this to be the last output is um, for, two, for two reasons. The first reason is this is the only output that will exist at runtime. Um, the flashcards are generated statically. There's gonna be a GUI at runtime, but the data is pre-generated. Same for the quizzes. There's gonna be a GUI at runtime, but there is no logic occurring. There's no processing occurring. So the last process to run is the conversational partner because it's gonna run every time someone prompts. So that's one reason that it's last. Another reason that it's last is it needs to reflect and incorporate the entire prior corpus. The chat agent should be aware of the flashcards. It should be aware of the quizzes. It should be aware of the social media content. So that's why it should be uh, last from a processing point of view. First of all, because it has to, because it's the last program to run. Uh, and second of all, because we want it to be aware of all the prior content. So that's why it's last. Um, and then why is it the hardest problem? The reason it's the hardest problem is because these tools are computationally heavy. So for flashcards and for quizzes, we can have a static GUI that's server-side generated um, and it can be not just SSR, but SSG, statically generated at build time. And then at runtime, it's basically flat HTML. It's super fast, great for search engines, great for indexing, and cheap. Cheap to host, cheap to serve. Uh, in fact, free, free to host and free to serve. The um, slides are kind of goofy because they're inside of this Laterly Slides repository. Um, so what is, what is the output? I think the answer is the output is, a, is this readme file. Um, and from that point of view, again, free to host. In fact, we're not even really hosting it. Um, well, I guess GitHub There should be a link right here. In the upper right, there should be a link. Um, view this information as a slideshow here. 
So let me grab this link and put this in the upper right. Oh, or use your GitHub pages. Cool, there it is. Okay, so this, these are the same, right? Slides and slides, yeah. So it's it's hosted for, for free. Um, a customized chatbot is not hosted for free. In fact, it's quite expensive. There's a couple ways to go about this. One way that we could host it for free, quote unquote, is if we expect the end user to run it locally. So if the end user is running it locally, and that's what I've been thinking about previously, basically, is because I wanted this to be open source and free from the beginning. I have a GitHub issue open for this. I want to open that up while I talk about this. Optimize model support. Um, so here I have a list of different um, models, and I'd like to add this article that I reviewed earlier today. It gives a, a list of, of many more commercial and open models. Just port it over to JavaScript, then embed in the static HTML page. Yeah, so this misunderstands the difficulty here. The difficulty is actually not with the code. The code is actually pretty straightforward. The difficulty is in getting a quality output. <clears throat> there are so many models today. Um, GP GPT for all V2 is like a really recent one. This has a low memory requirement, six gigs. And so we can, so this is where the, the, the trouble comes in. I can pay for a cloud machine, a remote machine to host six gigs and it will be able to host that thing. Is this Koala? Which one is this? It all started as I was hunting for a chat GPT-like model that was open sourced of good quality and locally runnable on a single consumer GPU. So ideally under 24 gigabytes of memory. Uh, chat GLM. It's a really cool thing. It's a really, really cool thing. And it gets the um, machine hosting requirement all the way down to six gigs on a GPU. Um, there are other alternatives that run just off a CPU. So we, we're seeing trade-offs. Most people on their local computer will have um, no dedicated GPU at all and or a low quality GPU. Almost everyone has a CPU, uh, but they will vary in power. So the trick here is driving the price down to zero. Well, here's the answer to the riddle. It's never going to zero. You cannot get a free, like unless you win a scholarship or, or a lottery or something, you're not gonna have a free computer. So I can make a free service available um, if I really um, make it a crappy, a crappy tiny model that runs for a little while, like uh, an hour a month. Um, that would be an interesting option because people could clone the repository, they would set up the service themselves, and they would get their free hour a month. And basically everyone could get a free hour of this crappy model. And so that's one strategy I could go for. And if you picture the quality expense trade-off, that would be sort of about the limit of as cheap as you could get it. Also, pe people could run it locally, and that would be free in quotes as long as they had their own computer, which computers aren't free, but provided they had their computer, the marginal cost would be negligible, the cost of electricity. So that would be the uh, low quality, low cost option. Um, so that's one answer to the riddle. There's another answer to the riddle. Um, there's actually a bunch. There's a whole continuum of these options. Um, but basically, let's go for the, the opposite end, which is to maximize quality. And the maximizing quality is GPT-4. Uh, well, even that is not quite maximizing quality. But that's pretty much maximizing quality that I can achieve inside of the time frame of a hackathon. You could go beyond GPT-4 and do like your own state-of-the-art model trained from your own data sources and whatever, and that would be vastly expensive 
So I'm actually taking that even out of the realm of my, my possibility frontier, if you will. Um, so on my possibility frontier, GPT-4 is like it, I think, and I could be wrong, but I think that's the highest quality um, that I can go for. And I prefer that. So if I look along this continuum, I'm actually seeking to maximize quality subject to the constraint that I can actually get it done inside of the, inside of the hackathon. And I'm willing to accept the fact that GPT-4 is actually a proprietary model. And so there's ways in which this is not free and open. Um, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because my code is free and open. So this repository rect is open source. Um, and the inputs and the outputs are also free and open. So, um, and as we discussed, if we go the other route, people are gonna have to get their own tokens anyway. Basically, if I, if I want an output of usable quality, um, I don't see a good way of getting there. Maybe Vicuna. This is probably the closest we can get. Did I not mention Vicuna in the list of options? Vicuna LLM. This thing, I think, gets 90%. It gets to 90% of the quality of ChatGPT. ChatGPT being, um, if I'm not mistaken, compared against, benchmarked against GPT 3.5, if I'm not mistaken. Here, this has an asterisk on it, so we can actually see. What is the asterisk? Okay, they give an asterisk and then they don't explain the asterisk. So I don't really know, but I, I um, believe that's benchmarked against GPT-3 or 3.5, not GPT-4. That would be, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong here. If you can get 90% as good as GPT-4 off, to, off of this thing, then I should be doing this thing probably. Even then I'm not sure, even then I'm not sure. Why? Because, I, because if it's 90% as good as GPT-4, that means I can get better than 11% gain by using GPT-4, because 90% plus 10% is 99, 90% plus 11% is 99.9, .9, right? So as based on the interest of Latterly, <clears throat> Latterly is teaching people to code. And here's the thing, if I end up with crappy output, people are not gonna want my repository anyway, like it doesn't matter. The Latterly brand doesn't really realize optimal value. People are not learning to code as effectively as possible. And so there are many negative cascade, there are many negative value cascades that happen even with a 10% cut to quality. So, you know, let me know in the chat if you can confirm that this tool is 90% of the quality of GPT-4. I don't think that's the case. I would be surprised, very positively surprised if that's the case. I think this is talking about 90% as good as GPT 3.5 or maybe even GPT 3, which in my opinion is just like um, pretty, low, pretty low quality in terms of the final output. It, I would be better off making things by hand than by using an AI assistant. Okay, so that's my line of thought, and that is the reason that ultimately I am cool with going for um, the approach that I'm gonna outline shortly. Oh, oh, let me also add this, and let's do a graph here. Um, MS Paint online. Um, so we got a little graph. Here is the um, the cost quality frontier. I 
don't know if it should be a flat curve or if it should be sort of a curve. Yeah. It should not be a flat curve, actually. It should be something like this. Ah, erase the thing. I think I'm spending up too much time on graphs, but I hear people like graphs. I actually want to get into the code. Oh, man. This is why I'm a much better coder than I am content creator, to be honest with you guys. But you all already knew that, didn't you? Tra la 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 la. Bloom, bloom, bloom. It needs to be, uh, it can't curve up at all, or then it's like not a real possibility frontier. Okay. See, this is why I don't do graphs. This sucks. Okay, you get the idea. Here's the frontier. Now I've decided to go with um, um, GPT-4. <clears throat> Um, which I th which I think is the upper limit of quality that I can feasibly achieve inside of the uh, inside of the hackathon. So let's say I go with GPT four. Um, now the question becomes how. So there's a different question that I want to visualize over here, which is how to get my README into the model. And I could be mistaken. I'm not an expert uh, in this regard. But I think this is the same problem, or at least an, a parallel problem, to the fine-tuning problem. Okay, so um, let's say getting my corpus, which is the laterally slides, um, read me, plus, uh, plus social media content um, into, into the model. Um, and I think there are three ways. One is I could uh, train a custom model, which we are saying is infeasible. Two is I could um, leverage uh, out of the box um, token memory limit. And three is I could uh, implement fine tuning. Okay. Uh, it would be better if the font was a bit bigger. Hey, by the way, if you're on TikTok, you can go over to YouTube or Twitch and see the full screen. Let me also make sure I'm watching the YouTube and Twitch chats over here. I don't see any comments currently. All right. So we ruled out training a custom model as infeasible. Um, leveraging the existing token memory limit is easier. Implementing fine tuning will result in higher quality, but it's harder and it is less free and open. Um, it's less free like beer and it's less free like, free, uh, you know, free like freedom and free like beer. Like beer doesn't cost anything, that's free. So here's the thing with chat GBT, it's free in the sense that you can use it without any out-of-pocket expense. In that sense, it's free like beer, we would say. It's not really free like freedom because they have some proprietary stuff going on. With implementing fine-tuning, um, what would it be? Potentially neither, I guess. It's, it's, really, it's really different. Um, so the tools to do fine-tuning are free like beer and free like freedom but you need to actually pay money to use those tools. We go back to you need the fancy hardware or you need to use your computer. If you happen to have a sick computer, then you need to tie it up for a while. Um, and the result of that process will be your trained, fine-tuned uh, weights and stuff, your model basically, which at first glance, is also not free as in freedom. You're free to use it, but it's proprietary to you and not open to the world. Now you can choose to open it as a second order step, but there's no obligation to, and so you can see how it's a little more complicated like that. 
GPT-4 doesn't support fine tuning yet. This is true, this is true. Um, so Leslie has anticipated what I'm gonna suggest here. What I'm gonna suggest here is that we should leverage the out of the box token memory limit. Why do I wanna do that? I think ultimately it's the best user experience um, and it gives you the best sort of quality per price. Um, so everyone loves chat GPT, that user experience, they love it anyway. People do not love cloning down complicated repositories and doing their own fine tuning. Uh, people don't love doing that. No one's gonna do that. Um, and even if they wanted to, there's a cost constraint so that people practically just won't. Um, so for the purpose of the hackathon, I want to go the leverage the out of the box token memory limit approach, which doesn't seem, it seems weird because it's like, that's not open source code. Like this is a hackathon to write code. But what I'm suggesting we do is we take some text and put it into an external proprietary system called ChatGPT. That's like not really open sourcey, right? Um, and it, it, my answer is in my weird, like unclear rushed hackathon thinking, it still seems to be the most way to get the most freedom and access to the most people, even though technically it's leveraging not open source code. Um, and so I think that's actually preferred to option three even though option three would be leveraging me writing and contributing open source code, it wouldn't actually benefit people. Um, it, and like we would not get this big distribution of, uh, of value, which is kind of, in my view, the spirit of open source, if you will. Uh, okay, so that's why I'm going to take the approach in this video that I'm going to take, which is basically, when we think about Rect, we think about these four pillars and when it comes to optimizing model support, I'm going to suggest that people should take some content that Rect produces and just paste it into um, GPT, chat GPT, and use, and use the chat GPT plus contextualized token information. Use that as the fourth pillar of Rect instead of me including uh, like a custom trained model in Rect or like GPT for all with bells and whistles because GPT for all and bells and whistles or Vicuna and bells and whistles, etc. cetera, uh, these are all gonna be worse outputs. They're all gonna be less helpful. Um, and I, I think they're probably going to require more steps and still be less helpful. Okay, uh, that, all that being said, outside of the hackathon, I may, um, do the fine tuning thing myself. Um, and that may not use GPT-4. That's kind of a gamble. Maybe I do fine tuning and the output is still worse. Um, it could be, I don't know. So there's some like entrepreneurial risk there, but the potential reward is that I could get uh, like a fine tuned proprietary model that I could monetize for laterally. So these are the trade-offs. And then also the other possibility is um, that like in a few months, GPT-4 could be fine tunable. Um, and that would seem to be the best of both worlds. So uh, let's cross that bridge when it's actually possible instead of like getting a second best solution for more work today. Cool. So for the purpose of the repository, what I will now be doing is including instructions on how to do um, a recursive uh, or, or no, I'm actually going to do the recursive piece. So there's a large corpus that goes beyond the token scope uh, for GPT, three and a half or four, whichever chat GPT that you're using, it goes beyond the token scope. So what I'm gonna do is by unit summarize and then take this summary document and say, hey, you end user, dump the summary document in there and then ask it your questions. And that's going to be the fourth pillar of Rect. Leslie says, GPT-4 costs about 30 times what, what 3.5 Turbo does. Is it 30 times better? Something to consider. Uh, that's a great question. Yeah, for most purposes, the answer is no, it's not 30 times better. If you look at the acceptability of code completion solutions, um, GPT-3.5, 
gives you about like what a 30, 40% acceptance rate that the developer will go, yes, that's a good solution. Um, that's GPT three and a half. GPT four with reflection. Uh, so I think prior to reflection, it gets you about like 65, 70. And with reflection, it gets you about 75, 80. So the difference between 30 or 40% of the time and like 75, 80% of the time, it's not a 30 fold increase. It's quote unquote only twice as good. But here's the interesting thing. If I could make you twice as good of a programmer, uh, oh, it's extremely significant. Leslie says, ah, so that's pretty significant. Yes, it is. So if I could make you twice as good of a programmer, I would not be willing to pay 30 times as much. I could just hire 30 people, right? But that's not how the math works. <laughs> The math is I could pay 30 times as much as GPT 3.5 to double your productivity. And GPT 3.5, as computers go, may not be cheap, but as humans go, it's very, very, very cheap. <laughs> um, so GPT 4 turns out to be a fantastically better absolute value gain as a human productivity enhancer. Hopefully that made sense. I could, I, I could walk you through the math slower, but. When we're talking about augmenting human labor productivity, that's a very different ball game than when we're talking about squeezing out like dollars per gigabyte in a pure machine system, something like that. Okay, for now, um, leverage um, GP, or chat GPT out of the box token limit. And I'm gonna argue again, for the purpose of the hackathon, we are leveraging AI and we are leveraging open source. So we have all of the pieces that the hackathon is asking for. They're just assembled in a slightly strange way because I'm gonna tell the user to take an output and put it in chat GPT. Um, but me what I'm telling the user, that content there, that's my open source contribution. So you can see that I am making an open source contribution even though the system end to end is not open source. Technically Web3 says, what do you mean with reflection? Uh, reflection is where you, when you tell the system to think before it speaks or think after it speaks, actually. Um, so Khan Academy has a think before you speak protocol um, in their AI system. Uh, but if you're going to do, by the way, I'm going to include this in the instructions. So um, it, will, it will be explained in the repository. But when you're using ChatGPT, you actually need to tell it to think after it speaks. So you will ask it a question, it will give some answer, and then you will tell it what's wrong with that answer you gave me, or can you do better? Um, these are reflective acts. So for example, I could say, hey, chat GPT, give me four um, blog topics um, that you think will attract a lot of viewers, and it'll give me four. Sometimes it won't, but let's say all goes well. <laughs> Sometimes it'll give me like six, and I'm like, I asked you for four, what's going on? It's like, you can't, you're not good at math. But let's say all goes well, it gives me four. I can cause it to reflect and I can say, consider the last four that you gave me. Which two are the best? Please make two more that are of that quality, that level of quality. Um, and so you'll end up with four, but there'll, there'll be a, a higher total quality in the reflected estimation of GPT. Does that make sense? You can also ask it to do this with code. You can ask it to give you a code solution and then you can ask it to write it better or more concisely or more safely. <clears throat> you can ask it to reflect on its own output basically. Uh, for now, leverage chat GPT out of the box token limits and use a uh, recursive by unit summarization then um, then commit the summarized outputs and have docs that instruct the user about how to use these outputs. Um, like include a bit about reflection. Makes sense. Thoughts on auto GPT just cloned the GitHub repo. Uh, I have no thoughts on auto GPT. I haven't really dealt with it. My, my first glance is that it's too dumb. I think it's too dumb. 
Um, but I'm open to having my mind changed on that. If someone can show that auto GPT can produce outputs better than GPT-4, uh, cool. But I think it's kind of dumb and expensive. Uh, and I don't mean dumb in like some like casual offensive way, by the way. I mean that in a technical way, which is it doesn't efficiently translate inputs into high quality outputs. And it takes a long time to learn and it has a lower top threshold of learning. So that's what I mean by being technically dumb. I don't mean like, oh, it sucks, like some sort of like slanderous way. All right, cool. So now we have decided the four pillars, right? Um, to recap, Flash cards and quizzes from a data perspective are done. The GUI needs to be improved, but that's fair enough. The slides um, are to do, but I think we have a clear line of sight on how to do them. Um, and, and that is the same story as with the chat bot. Okay. So let's get into it. Um, basically what I wanna do is create a by unit map. Open up VS Code here. What are the units? Let's say we have an educational curriculum. Uh, guess I'll see, still don't have a GPT-4 API key. You don't need a GPT-4 API key for the process I'm suggesting here. You just need to pay the $20 a month to get access to the GPT-4 GUI and you can paste content in that GUI. That's what we're going to be suggesting here. Or you can use the 3.5 as well. You're just gonna get a lower quality output, but the same process works. You don't need any API keys. Okay. Um, so we have the prompt for quizzes, the prompt for flashcards. We'll upgrade VS Code later. Okay. Um, oh, I have uncommitted stuff. Oh, did I not commit this stuff? What? I guess I never committed this stuff. Uh, okay, because like we found the bug, right? We found the bug and so I went and posted on Twitter and I was done. Open AI, wow, I need to commit this stuff. Python.env. Get LLM reply. Did this even work? Prompt for flashcards. It's reverting these two. Let me cancel that. Cancel this. I'll stage my pri pro my pi project .toml. and the lock file sure. And what I'm looking at here is using the OpenAI completion API, which I think did not work. I think that was the issue. So you get the first response from OpenAI. Let me take this off screen and see if I have my API key in there. E and V, I have some API key. I don't know if that's real or fake, to be honest. <laughs> There's a key in there. Okay, yeah, I think the issue is we implemented this all and then it told us that I had to pay money and I was like, oh crap, and I like stopped because I didn't want to put in my financial details on stream. I think it's coming back to me. 
Technically, Web3 says, have a good one. More work for me. See you later. Yeah, so I didn't want to pay money. Um, so I ended the stream, and then I, I think I never did pay money, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Um, so why would we want to do that now? I know a reason offline, like outside of the hackathon, that I would do that is because I'm just going to pay for quality. But again, for the purpose of something that is... Um, it's not really open, but it's like maximally usable and maximally beneficial to people for a low cost. I think they would want to just take the content and go over there and pass it, paste it in chat GPT. Do you even know how to dev blockchain? Cosmos SDK. Not trying to do blockchain right now. No, I use third web when I do blockchain, but I'm not trying to do that right now. Um, okay, so we have these prompts. Yeah, I think I can just commit this and then not use this because this is following a pattern where we are just paying for the open AI. Uh, we're just paying for the open AI tokens. And I don't want to do that. I mean, you can use this code if you want to, and they give you like 18 or 20 bucks a month free, so you can do that. But this, I think, will not be the main approach. I think we tried this out and figured that we have to pay money, and so it's like I'm not going to do this. Let me try to run it for kicks. <laughs> um, inside of Rect, there's CD, ooh, caps is on, BE. CDBE um, slash transcript. So I went to poetry run Python. Main. Yeah, see, it's um, it's cutting me off. You exceeded your current quota. Please check your plan and billing details. Yeah. So let's revert this. We'll commit what we have. Um, let's see. Let me look at the before my code changes. Can I use any of this? It just writes the prompts. Um, Okay, so one thing I can do, and I guess it's just formatted. That's what it looks like. Oh, I think I added black, maybe. Because um, you see they're just to-dos. To-do, send it to the LLM, and it's using asyncio.run. That's fine. So what I can do is if the um, if the open AI, if the open AI API key is empty or if it's falsy, don't even try and just write to file. And that way I don't get those like cut off things. So let's do that briefly. Um, and also let me take this off screen and change my environment key name so that it's not detected as existing. I need a .env file. Uh, okay, I already have it inside of the transcript service specifically is where I put it. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let me make a template.env as well. And so I will call this disabled um, underscore. Okay, so now I have a .env.template and I'm saying leaving it empty disables calls 
to the, and you can see GitHub Copilot is finishing the sentence for me. Decentraband says, you said develop blockchain before. What did you develop and what chain? Um, was it Ethereum? I'm not sure. I was working on Futurecaster. Is Futurecaster still up? I don't want to get off topic. Um, you can go to my GitHub and you can look for Futurecaster. Um, yeah, casting the future at futurecaster.vercel.app. Um, so let's go over there. And it's kind of like a fortune cookie type of thing. Okay, so here it is, right? Um, you can shake the magic eight ball, boom. You will have a wicked evening and some mad good sleep. And so it gives you like uh, fortunes. So there's your fortune, disintrabands. And um, I never finished it, but the idea was that when you make these random uh, fortunes, you cast these random fortunes, it will, it will give you a, um, like a, a, a um, like a token. Um, yeah. Uh, and then it's like, that's like your token. It's like your property and it is associated to uh, randomly generated art, randomly generated website theme. Um, and you can like get that art on a shirt. And so it would be like your art on your shirt. Um, so that was, that was the concept. And you could like buy and sell from others and like change the theme of the website this way and like get whatever and like collect them like Pokemon cards and shit. Um, we never got that far. Maybe we'll come back one day. <clears throat> Spam the chat if you want to see it happen. Let me know. Uh, it's not going to be in this hackathon, but maybe in a, maybe some other time. Um, okay. Closing all these things. What's up? I'm trouble. And now we are back to Rekt. Great. I failed my final round interview with Coinbase Wednesday. Uh, hey, good job getting to a final round interview with Coinbase. That's an accomplishment. Hang in there. Economy's rough right now. But you'll get there. You just got to hang in there. Okay. So the template file can be committed, right? Okay, so we'll commit the template file. And what do I do now? Um, let me make sure the logic disables it. So here is this open AI dot, so here, basically. Or maybe do I wanna do it in the outer context? I await the reply. I want to do it in the outer context, yes, because I don't even want, I don't even want to try to parse if I didn't actually make a call. Um, okay, so let's go here. I kind of want to do this like up here. How long is this hackathon? It's over this weekend. So I forget if it's Saturday or Sunday at midnight that the thing's over, but I am planning to be done uh, tomorrow night because I have other stuff to do this weekend. Okay, so let's see if I can set it up here. And, um, and if that works, then uh, then I can actually investigate it down here. For prompt in, and I want to write the reply. Here I can just say if, and uh, just one grand else statement. Else, um, look at that. GitHub Copilot has this whole thing right here. Open AI, open API key not found. Please set the environment variable. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say open API key not found. Please manually submit the prompts to chat GPT uh, as described in the readme. So you can see the idea here, right? Again, going back to 
I do consider this open source. It, it, it is open source. The end-to-end -end system is not open source, but there is an open source component here. Um, but even though there are closed source pieces like ChatGPT, this is still going to be the best way for the most people to get the most out of my project. Um, even though I'm telling them to manually submit to GPT, isn't that better for most people than asking them to go pay for API credits? Because most people are not going to do it. What's a hackathon? A hackathon is a short period of time where you do uh, where you code. <laughs> That's all it is. It's a short period of time where you code. Typically, um, there is a theme, and um, typically there are often pri a like a a competitive aspect, like a judging round, and prizes for winners. I think that's fair. I think that's generally the case. In this case, it is. Okay, so let's run this again. I want it to give me that print statement. Wow, it's doing it over and over again. I only wanted that to happen once. Why did that happen so many times? So this is a for video in videos. Right. Um, okay. So the API key is not going to change between video iterations of the loop, but still logging each time that we loop, logging something is useful as a progress indicator, at progress indicator. So we just have a counter. Counter equals zero. Um, here, we will change this to be an elif. So if the counter is zero, so we're only going to log this once. Um, and then we are going to do, uh, we're going to increment the counter every time. And um, I'm going to print an f string. Oh, it's, is it? Yeah. Finish counter of Lynn videos. Look at that. Thanks. I want to learn programming. Cool. Yeah, you came to the right place. Follow the page. Um, and uh, yeah, check my bio. You can book a consult with me. Um, you can do free code camp. Free code camp is great. Code Academy. One, two, three, four, five. We got it. Okay. So we got the log message only once, and then we got this progress indication that I wanted to see. <laughs> Write this in TCL. No, thanks. I, I, I like my uh, mental health. OK, so this is a feature. Um, smoke, API, smoke open API keys if you've got them. Um, Otherwise, uh, instruct to prompt manually. Juicy Pop-Tart, thank you for the likes and awesome username. <laughs> Quick reminder, y'all, if you're on TikTok, you can go to, over to um, Twitch or YouTube. I have the same username. Um, and you can see the full screen. Also, you can get there from my TikTok bio.
Juicy Pop Tart says, how long have you been coding for? The answer is about 10 years. <clears throat> Refresh the page here. You can see we have smoke, A smoke API keys if you got them. So this is now publicly available on that rect repository. Refreshing the page. Let's see how many stars we got. We got two stars. Go smash the star button. Support open source. What status it return on empty response? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're not going to be using that. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's a 200 or a 400 series. It's not going to be a 500 series. I imagine it's a 200 with message, but it might be a 400. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, and when I say 400, I mean 400 series, not a 400 literal. Okay. So now, um, now I want to make slides. And how are we going to do this? We have decided we're going to do this. It's a manual process for better and for worse, but for very good reason, I think. So we want to create a map of my social inputs to the learning units. And this map is already partially embedded. You can see here. Oh, this is not slides. This is rect. So the, there is a curriculum map that's already partially embedded. You can see here as represented in the table of contents. In fact, we could, if we want, we could parse the table of contents, although that seems like a silly way to do this to me at the moment, but maybe it's the right way to do it. Uh, well, then why keep hitting it? I did not keep hitting it. I don't know. You might have misread my code. Um, I said, if open AI key, eventually go over here and uh, get the LLM reply. But this API key is falsy. It's falsy. So I, I never hit it, not even once. I just go over here and I print that the key was not found. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no problem. I know I'm clicking around a lot. Joined late. Yeah, no problem. Hey, thanks for being here. Glad to see you here. Okay. Um, so I could extract a map here. Um, that seems kind of goofy. I think I just want to write one explicitly. Um, another thing I could do that would be even better is if I could get the entire token context for the whole corpus. So call this thing a corpus. Um, if I could get GPT awareness of all of this content. I don't think I can though, but let's go ahead and count it. Let's uh, go all the way down here and just grab it. Um, let's go only through the, uh, yeah, let's grab the whole thing. Maybe I sh should go to the raw form, but I don't want the, um, ooh, do I have laterally slides locally? I think I do. So I'm going to fuzzy type L-A-D-D-R-L-Y-R-E-A-D. -E cool. So I got the fuzzy type and I'm going to control A, control C, but I don't want these, uh, these TikTok URLs, because they don't do anything. Like they're not, I want to transcript those and then you get the idea. But let's see token counter. I'm assuming that I have too many tokens, but assuming is a bad idea, right? So let's verify rather than assume. Okay, so I got like 12,000 tokens. Uh, and the token limit on GPT-4 is allegedly around 8,000. Uh, you can get on a waiting list and get one that's higher, that's allegedly, what is it, 16, 24, 32, something like that. Um, first of all, I'm on the waiting list and they haven't given me access, so that doesn't help me much. Uh, second of all, because I want this to be sort of democratic and accessible and distributed, I don't want to assume that the end user of the repository has been granted access. Um, and so I want to use the one that's true for chat GPT, which is, uh, again, allegedly 8K. I think that's true. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's true for um, GPT-4 and also GPT-3.5. I think they both have this limit allegedly around 8K. I keep saying allegedly because I found an issue and I told OpenAPI, and to my knowledge, they have not yet fixed it. 
where the actual token limit was like between six and 7,000, even though they said 8,000 are allowable, but it, it couldn't get that high. Burn markup, get rid of vowels. These are good thoughts, actually. Have you used nado.py for async functionality? No. I don't need, uh, I got async IO, it's good enough. Uh, CSV could be a good solution here, possibly. Um, let me try. Um, what else do I want to try? So here's what I would like to do, just to explain what I would like to do, and then we can talk about the best way to do it. What I would like to do is replace these URLs with informative content. And where's that informative content come from? It comes from those videos. Um, now, these videos have been replicated into Google Drive. And many of them, not all of them, many of them are on YouTube Shorts. And so let's restrict this conversation to YouTube Shorts. With YouTube Shorts, we've seen, and that's what this code does up here, <laughs> These are YouTube short video IDs. With YouTube shorts, we've seen, I can pull the text transcript and proceed from there. Cool, so I think there's basically two tasks to be done. I can do them in either order. It makes sense to me. Uh, so ultimately we need to do both. What we need to do is we need to get the corpus, that text information that we want GPT to process and then we want to turn it into these slides. Does the end up being different than normal GPT-3? If you use GPT-4, yeah. Just will it be useful to folks and make it worth the time to do? That's the goal, that's the goal, we're going for it. Um, so in an ideal world, I could just, you know, click a button, maybe I have a browser extension, and it would pick out the URL, it would go get the transcript, take care of everything. And I guess it would even submit the pull request uh, to do the update. Um, so walking back from that, what can we do? Um, if these were YouTube shorts, I could pretty much do that. So um, that sort of tells us the answer, right? The answer is, that this is not going to work with TikTok URLs. So I need a different uh, readme source document, basically. I need a different readme source document. In the future, maybe I can use this one, but currently I cannot use this one. May need to add a voice to text of TikToks. Let's go voice to text. Is this going to be, is this going to be better? Um, oh gosh, do you want me to actually use the, the Microsoft app? What do you mean voice to text? I was going to use Whisper, uh, and this thing costs 99 cents, it's not open. Um, tell GPT to use the enum URL with appended unique ID. Nope. Oh, this voice to text? This thing is 12 years old, holy. No, if I wanna do voice to text at all, I'm gonna use Whisper API, but I don't wanna do voice to text at all because YouTube does it for me. So I wanna be smart. I wanna be smart and take advantage of the tools that YouTube is giving me. Um, so, for an MVP, probably better to use YouTube Shorts. Yep, totally agree. The Siri app, oh gosh, no. We're not using Siri, I hate Siri. It doesn't work for me. Okay, uh, what I wanna do is presume that I have a different readme. So let's make a different readme. That's what I wanna do. I want a different readme that just uses YouTube Shorts. Let's go ahead and presume that I have this, I don't wanna presume, let's just do it. Let's just do it. So I'm gonna make a secondary readme over here. Um, yeah, 
Let me copy. You know what? We're actually in a, the current one. We're going to call this readme legacy. So this is officially the legacy readme. Binary64 says hi. What's up? What's up? Thanks for being here. Um, so there's the legacy, and then here is the new one. And what is the difference? The new one does not have any uh, YouTube shorts. Okay, this looks good. Uh, to do fix readme below this point, let me read me copy 3.txt. It do be like that, don't it? Tech humor doesn't need to be in here. Content creator advice doesn't need to be in here. Miscellaneous econ of education, other TikTok devs to follow. So let me, boom. Get rid of all of this content. Leadcode.com. You love to see it, don't you? You love to see it. Um, open source contributions. Okay. You just need to remove repetitive stuff. You know what? You have a you have a bit of a point there, don't you? So soft skills, this is gonna say to do. Okay. Why VS Code? Uh, let's see. I thought love was only real in fairy tales. Ha, dun, dun, dun. React. Is Superbase a bit like Hasura? The answer is yes. Subtopics, VS Code, whoa, 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 all this stuff. Um, yeah, this needs to say to do. Um, to do. And I'm going to write this in a bit of a more prompty fashion. And the, the intent here is that GPT can understand me better. So here I'm going to say to do it. So previously I said 0.6 to 7 colon JSX. I'm going to re reword this to say in six or seven bullet points, explain JSX functional components, next.js and blitz.js. Now, I don't know if GPT is on text, if needed. Um, Why six or seven? Why not one, two, three, four, five, eight, nine? Very good. And 10 and 11, et cetera, right? Um, I think the answer is one, two, three. Um, it, the answer is that I was thinking that each of these might want uh, two, basically, is what I was thinking, which would lead to eight. And so, um, yeah, maybe this needs to say in four to eight bullet points. And so one or two for each of these. Explain JSX, one, two, three, four. Uh, yeah, I don't know, that could be the wrong, that could be wrong to do. So we're just swapping all of these links over into to do. HTML, discuss code comments. Uh, semantic HTML, accessibility, forms, uh, 
I think that works. And forms. Googling techniques. Um, leave all of this, leave all of this. How will AI deal with these links? It can't, right? That's the whole pain point. So that's why we're trimming these out. And we're also trimming out these comments that don't really matter. I think the AI may be able to understand, believe it or not, the, um, these element comments and these sort of interesting technical comments. Uh, because those are um, implementation details related to code that I think the AI is possibly aware of because it's kind of old. Okay, now I'm going to control A, control C. How big are we now? How many tokens are we now? Um, and before I do that, let me budget. Um, how few tokens do I want it to be before I can proceed in this pattern? Um, all it really needs is your PayPal password. Yeah. Um, how few tokens? The answer is whatever is spit out by this prompt thing over here. Let's go over here. The prompt thing over here. Prompt. Consider the following web transcripts. So this is going to please generate at least two flashcards per transcript. So let me grab this. We're going to do a new chat, GPT-4. Drop it like it's hot. It's going to produce some output. So here in the transcript service, I will now have um, A new, do I want a new folder? I do. Um, so I want this to be, what do I want to call this? I guess I can call it outputs. It's just weird, like usually you don't commit your output folder. Sure, why not? So here there's prompt four, there is no bare prompt. So I can delete this bare prompt txt. These, I'm gonna move these to the outputs folder. Um, and I will change the, um, I will change the uh, code to make use of this outputs folder. Let me go ahead and delete these flashcards or this uh, text so that we can have the code build it. I want it to make. I want to make sure that slash is okay. So what just happened? Why do I have four? I'm going to delete all of these. I should only have in the outputs folder at the end of this. Every time you see a dollar sign replaced with TikTok Live, link, 8K. Okay, so we got into the outputs folder. Good. And now, in the outputs folder, I will make a new file, which is called flashcards.json. Okay. And that will be this. Okay. And you can see 
I only need this many free tokens. So how many free tokens is this? This is about 800 tokens. I only need this many free tokens. Um, and so if I can budget my token budget to allow this much space, then we can proceed under the assumption that a curriculum unit is of this size. This size is about the equivalent of five, one, two, three, four, five YouTube videos. What I'm saying is use a keyword to do a string replace for Jack, chat GPT to do on its end, duh. Yeah, this is not gonna work. We can't just do keyword replacements, y'all. This is a lot, we're doing a lot more than keyword replacement. <laughs> um, okay, so five videos, is five videos the length of a curriculum unit? Um, it's not like an order of magnitude wrong. <laughs> um, we can go with that for the purpose of a hackathon. I think in the real world, it's in some case, let's go to this readme legacy. We can scan through some of these units can be, can be 20 videos long, but, um, we can always split those, right? Binary 64 says, if you're scanning for keywords, you have to consider the embeddings. It's an interesting point. It's a problem I don't have to deal with. Okay, so look at this, look at this section on Googling techniques. Um, we can see that on a given slide, I don't have, I don't like to have more than three bullets. Okay, well then I have four. So I've just contradicted myself, haven't I? Four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Looks like five bullets is the upper limit. Yeah. Uh, I would prefer not to have five. Three to five. I mean, for a slideshow, right? You're talking about bullets on a slideshow presentation. Um, so yeah, five or less, that makes sense. So a, a slide can be up to five. Um, bullet points, but I, I really don't like to have multiple sources. Let's say, is this sort of the limit here? Three, one, two. Yeah, three sources on a slide. Here's one, two, three. Well, in this case, I, in this case, every bullet has its own link. Okay, so let's say a maximum of five. So, um, in the limiting case, I have five bullets, meaning five different sources on a slide. And then the question becomes, how many slides per curriculum unit? Let's just maintain the five heuristic. Maintain the five heuristic, right? As a limiting case heuristic. Let me make a note of that. Um, now we're in laterally slides. I wanna go. This probably should go in the laterally slides readme, but then it's like, um, yeah, let's do it. So the laterally slides curriculum is now going in curriculum, curriculum.md. And we have a different file, which is called readme.md. Um, so it's readme.md. We'll have this section. Um, this is the open source curriculum for laterally.io. We're turning this into Markdown, so we're not using, this is not gonna be the slideshow here anymore. I don't need to mention the license because it has its own license file. View this information as a slideshow here. I can leave that uh, just so it'll have the target blank and open in a new, I guess let's leave all of them so that we get the target blanks and they open in new tabs. Harding KC says, hey man, what's up, what's up? Thanks for being here. 
Thank you for the follows on TikTok. Quick reminder, you can go over to Twitch or YouTube and see the full screen. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? Marty says, do you see what I'm saying? Tell GPT to replace with you one definition of TikTok link. It, it's not gonna work, Marty. It's not gonna work. Okay, so here, um, I'll have curriculum details. Um, the curriculum is documented in uh, curriculum dot md really there's only two points i want to make here the rest of it can wait um, these uh the it is divided into um units sized using a uh, five by five heuristic. Um, one, two, three, four. Or I don't need to do the fourth. This is five by five heuristic. That is five points per slide, each point having a unique source reference and, um, five slides of such content as the limiting case for unit um, informational size. Borrow says Perl over Python. Have you considered rewriting the backend using Haskell? Oh, wow. These are uh, mad times, mad times. Okay, so we've got the five by five heuristic documented. Here, um, and then here I will leave the license because this is actually a slide. Um, so someone might see the slide and not know about the code repository at all. So stating the MIT uh, license here is useful. Cool, so this curriculum.md is actually what's going to generate the slides in the future. And so this is the one that I wanna drop into chat GPT context. And so let's see if this works. So we're going over here. Uh, oh yeah, this is what I want to measure now. So I got, see, we're right on the border. We are right on the border. And this is why I can't reliably dump um, all of this information at once. I can't reliably dump all of this information at once. Um, so this is where units come in. So we do a few units at a time. Um, tech humor, I don't need that. Non-curriculum content, this is all gone basically. Brandon says, hey, just joined. What are you working on? I am building Rect, which is an open source tool. Here is the GitHub URL. Let's refresh the page and see if we got any new stars. Y'all, we have not gotten any new stars this uh, during this um, stream. So go smash the star button. So Rect is an AI-assisted transformer that takes social media content and it makes open source educational materials such as flashcards, quizzes, one day down the road, even a book. Um, What's, so, so currently there's four outputs, flashcard, quiz, slideshow, um, like for a lecture, like you can give a slideshow, um, 
And the fourth is a chat, chat partner, a chatting partner that has the information in mind and you can talk with it. Marty says chunk. Yes, yes, we're going to chunk basically. Haven't been here too long, so I apologize if I'm breaking an unwritten rule, but may I ask what the large idea is here? Yeah, what's the big idea? Or what's the point? There's four points, that's why it's called wrecked. <laughs> um, the point of it is to, to make these four outputs. And the source is my social media content, and then, the, and then we get these four outputs that help people learn how to code and get a job in tech. That's the ultimate goal here. So Laterally Slides is my open source educational curriculum. Um, feel free to smash the star button on that. Let's take a look. No new stars. Okay, so we got 14. That's cool. This thing has been around, but I've had to take care of it by hand. And it's labor intensive, and as a result, it does not really stay up to date. So we're going to have an AI assistant that helps us keep it up to date. That's what we're working on. The way we're doing this is transcripting all of these videos and then having it build out my markdown file. Um, because I'm going to ask it to build out my markdown file, I want to provide as much of the markdown file as reasonable so that it can understand, it can learn um, the formatting of the slides, basically, is the, is the tricky part here from a syntactical point of view. Um, okay. We got all this stuff in mind, and so what I need to know now, what's the GitHub all star? Um, it's, there are two. So there is laterally dash slides, and the other is called rect, R-E-C-T. Cool, all right, we're getting in the last, uh, last 10 minutes here, y'all. So what I want to do is I want to generate a slide. That's the point that I want to achieve today. You know what? Let's do... Here's an interesting idea that just crossed my mind, so maybe I should pivot. I want GPT to preserve the syntactical structure of this slideshow. Maybe I should just give it the current slideshow and ask it to sort of export the skeleton. Okay, let's try to do that. Let's do a new chat. I will ask it, um, what is reveal.js? Reveal.js is, is a JavaScript library for creating beautiful and active presentations. Great, so it knows what Reveal.js is. And I will say consider the following markdown file, which is a Reveal.js source file. Please create a different um, source file that preserves the curriculum unit structure of this presentation. and also preserves the um, the syntactical structure in a way that a gpt program can easily understand um do this um, as concisely as reasonable. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to enter that. Oh, it was too long. Okay, so that didn't work. Uh, 
Um, okay, so this is another reason we need to cut up the curriculum size. Where's my table of contents? Here's a table of contents. One of three, learn to code. Two of three, the job search. And then three of three is just gone. So three of three, I think, was non, like non-curriculum content, which we just don't even need to worry about at this point. Okay, so we can have these two high order sections. And, uh, and stitch those together. Okay, so the job search. So this will be part one of two, learn to code. And this is part two of two. And so let's go to the job search. Yeah, I never really get that far. So the thing is, there really is so, okay, this is the whole job search. It's like three links. <clears throat> oh, no, here's this. Soft skills are up here. Soft skills are under job search or no? Yes. Okay. Okay, so I just don't have a, uh, a sort of a part two marker, which I really should have. So let's do that. Part one of two, learn to code. Part two of two, the job search. Introduction to understanding the master plan. This is part two of two, the job search. Maybe that's what the slide looks like. It just says the job search. So I have part one and then I have part two, right? Part two, the job search, and then the body of the slide is the job search. Part one, learn to code, and the body of the slide is learn to code. Why is the file extension markdown and not HTML? Because it's a markdown file. Okay, so now that I have these two large parts, can I just take the first large part, or is even this? too much, um, too, too many tokens. So we don't save many tokens here. We're still over 6,000. Let me cut this in half. I just want to see the um, the token limit on a single response to chat GPT. So here we're at 1,500. I'm pretty sure I can do 1,500. Let's do some more than that. Can I do 2,000? Now we're at 1,600. Or 
4800. Can you do 4,400? Um, summarize this. Okay, so it got, it could hold that much. So if we can stay under 4,500 tokens, that's the guideline here. So let's jump back to the transcript service. We're gonna go to the readme over here. Um, so here is the, let's do output, uh, output generation. Um, output generation is currently largely manual. Here are the steps. Um, run. Um, ooh, python.main, it's not gonna work like that. Poetry run python.main. Confirm poetry is active. Um, yeah, poetry in the list. Install poetry and navigate to the transcript. Okay. Um, if it if it is confirmed to be running, you can run the main file uh, like it as follows. Once poetry is confirmed to be running, you can run the main file as follows. Okay. Um, run the main file as described in um, So we have an installing and running the service section. Um, this service uh, takes social media content and extracts um, uh, textual, uh, it takes social media content, extracts text, for LLMs and then houses the output of LLM interactions. This is gonna change every time you hit it. Cache and only update on merge cache. It's fine that it changes every time I hit it. That doesn't matter. Or at least I fail to see why it matters. Why does that matter? Output generation is currently largely manual. Here are the steps. Run the main file as described in. This section. Two, um, and then let's make a note. One, two, three, four. Um, this should result in the creation of outputs like prompt, asterisk.txt. Um, take the prompts one by one and run them through chat GPT. Um, you can use any model. Uh, let 
like, yeah, I don't even need to specify that, right? I don't think so. Let me know. Because I'm being, I'm saying chat GPT, it's sort of like, seems obvious that it's compatible with any chat GPT model. Because cash writing is expensive, but I just got here. Um, I mean cash just as in writing to text file. So I'm writing these. I'm not sure I get the point. It's not expensive to me because the uh, chat GPT, like as long as I stay under the rate limit, which I'm going to because this is a manual process, as long as I stay under the rate limit, I'm good, right? Okay, um, so output generation is currently largely manual. Here are the steps. Okay, so we can leave it, leave it like that. And then I want to make a note here, one, two, three, four. Um, currently, the per request token limit on chat GPT GUI submission uh, appears to be about uh, 4,500 4, tokens. Um, units educational units um, are broken up such that the core uh, laterally slides curriculum dot md file oh see rubber ducking helps every time i need to have a core I need to have a core file here. Do I want the core to be in laterally slides or do I want the core to be in the, uh, in the rect repository? I'll need to keep them in sync. If I'm looking in the laterally slides repository, qua laterally slides, It has no context of an LLM, nor should it. So the core, this idea of a core is a pure LLM construct. So in my mental model, let me know what you think, but in my mental model, that belongs in rect, not in laterally slides. Um, so we're gonna have a core here. How does this prompt keep getting built? I keep deleting it and it's like coming back from the dead. I must not be deleting it correctly. There you go, that's the reason. Outputs. outputs. Okay, so let's go delete them again. So we got these four. Okay. Uh, poetry run, and then it only generates the outputs in here, not over there, right? Cool. Um, JSON files are constructed as the result of LLM processing of the associated txt file. And this will be output um, one, two, three. Why is it three? Three, that's weird. All right, whatever. Um, for example, um, chat GPT will consume prompt for quizzes and the uh, response 
is saved and the response, provided it is well formed, is saved as uh, quizzes.json. Make sense? Oh my god, this is for quizzes. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are four outputs, but flashcards and quizzes are two of the four, yes. What are the output files? Can you explain really quickly? Oh, okay. Yeah, so you got the answer, right? <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so, and then we have this schema in here that follows the Prisma schema. So we're going to grab that. Open a new chat, fresh GPT-4, drop this in. Wow. Awesome. Thanks so much for being here. I thought you were documenting some kind of understanding. Uh, yes and no. I mean, I'm only documenting the process of generating them, basically. And like, why? Why are we doing it this way? Like, why am I not just interfacing directly with the API? Um, so documenting that part of it, like for a team or something, just for, not, not, I mean, yes and no, again, so this is part of a hackathon. So I'm document it, documenting it so that the people who are reviewing the hackathon can better understand. So this is the Superbase blog. Superbase Studio 2, what? Brah, they just dropped this information on me today. I'm gonna read about that later. But um, I'm really here for the hackathon, where'd it go? Yeah, so, so here's the hackathon. So I'm documenting things so that they can understand what I'm doing. And then I'm also documenting it for anyone who, who ends up using the repository, right? It's open source, so we want it to be sort of like usable and understandable. So here's quizzes.json. We just finished ours today, awesome. Why would you do a hackathon? Makes total sense now. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it when it all comes together. Yeah, it's really hard for me to like, uh, you know, code and um, explain everything I'm doing at the same time, um, especially with people sort of ducking in and out. I mean, it's hard enough to do that regardless, right? Anyone who's been in a coding interview, like they're not easy. Um, so then I'll say continue. You're good, thank you. Um, why would you do a hackathon, says Million Dollar Trader Dan. So one reason I would do a hackathon is just because I think it's fun. Another reason I would do a hackathon is for the clout um, and for the prizes. So look, I can get a, a mechanical keyboard that has a Superbase escape key. Literally, if the Superbase team watches this, can I please have the mechanical keyboard? I would love it. I will... I will treat it well. I commit this to you. And I push. If you got that joke, I know you got that joke. I trust the Superbase team got that joke. Um, so yeah, so for fun, for prizes, Marty says for learning, absolutely agree. I was trying to get a team together, but I didn't really get a team together. Y'all are welcome to submit a pull request on my repository and I'll name you as part of my team. There's one person so far who helped a little bit. Uh, if I can see their username, Land32. Shout out to Land32. And so I will be naming them as part of my team. But otherwise, I don't have anybody. And you can have up to five spots. So go submit a pull request and I'll name you on my team. And maybe you can win a prize as well. So yeah, but in general, hackathons, you, you will sometimes socialize with a team, right? So it's good for social networking. And uh, it's really good for the clout. Like if you are, especially as a junior, so I'm not a junior anymore, but when I was a junior, like less than 1% of juniors are going to hackathons. So if you pull up to an interview and you're like, yeah, I was at the Superbase hackathon last week, you're gonna see jaws drop. That's really impressive for a junior to do. 
Um, when you're a senior like me, it's like, cool. Like, it's like, cool. Um, it's so fun to talk about. You know, what'd you do this weekend? I did a hackathon. Oh, that's cool. Um, but when you're a junior, it's a real differentiator. Is there a site to find hackathons? Oh, good question. I'm sure there's got to be, but I can't think of one. Sorry. I can't think of one. Go ahead and search it and like, let me know. Uh, Discord, Discord in my TikTok bio. You're always welcome to come chat over there. And, uh, and yeah, it would be great to chat about a hackathon sort of like resource that can sort of keep track of upcoming hackathons. That'd be great. How do I hear about them? I hear about them from like, I don't even know. I just, I'm in, I have a, a large social network and people will post about stuff sometimes. I follow technologies and I follow their blogs. Like Superbase, I just saw it on their blog because I use Superbase all the time. Um, I hear about hackathons, yeah. When I'm like looking up events, it's like PyCon is coming up. I'll be going to that in Utah. Um, and there are meetups. I think that's probably the best way to keep your ears out for them if you're sort of passively searching. But you can also intentionally search, and that's probably even better, and just go Google hackathons, which I actually really usually don't do. Discord broken. Oh, no. All right. Uh, hmm. I'll have to fix that. Okay, sorry about that. You can... Um, that really sucks. Let me go over to my, let me see if I can fix it right now. Um, so TikTok. Here's this, and then we go over to my Discord. Oh, that's Twitch, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, Discord. I don't know, it does not look broken to me. Here, let me do an incognito window. So this is an incognito window. It looks like it's working to me. Um, probably doesn't work on mobile. Yeah, it could be a mobile problem, to be honest with you. React Wizard, good to see you. <sighs> okay, uh, cool. That was a good tangent, but let's get back on track. Oh, I need to keep that tab open so I can read it later. <laughs> All the tabs. Um, what were we doing? We we're getting quizzes.json completed. So let me go to the GPT-4 response. I told it continue and so it did. Okay, um, got that. The syntax is thrown off, I think, at the breaking point of seven. It's probably where the break happened, yeah. Uh, so let me, boom, do that, and we're otherwise good, yeah? Save it, formats it, cool, we're good. Um, so here, let me go ahead and commit my changes. There's a lot of changes. Um, let me do the readme by itself. So this will be docs, um, output generation. Okay. And then let me do all of, let me do the main file by itself. And then I'll do the static pieces by themselves. And so here we are basically just like leveraging the outputs folder. That's all we're doing. And I can go ahead and do, do everything here. Um, so this is feet. It's really a refactor, refactor, uh, leverage outputs folder. Cool. I'm gonna commit that, get push. Looks like it's taking a second over here. Action, not, action cannot be completed because I'm on mobile. I'm really sorry about that. I hope you'll, um, you can follow me on Twitter or something if mobile is not working. Um, obviously you can follow the TikTok page too and YouTube and yeah, on the off chance when you get to a, a non-mobile computer, maybe you can try to follow me there. Hey, we made it, McFly made it. So you had to like open it in your, uh, 
your browser or what? That's That really is not convenient. I'm sorry about that, but you got over here. Congrats. Okay, so we have these JSON. We have the flashcards and the quizzes. We have the plan. Uh, admittedly, I haven't done it yet, but I think you get the plan and then I can do it between streams and stream next time. Um, so we have the plan for, for what? For the slides, right? That's what I was trying to do before we finished up. So let me also crack open the laterally slides. And the idea here is um, docs and um, move or, or like curriculum dot md houses the curriculum now. Um, legacy readme has TikTok links. Um, that's pretty much the idea. So the new readme is not going to have any TikTok links anymore. Open up a separate terminal for laterally slides and we're wrapping up the... Um, I was hoping we would be able to generate a slide, but we ran into many frictions, so I don't think we're going to get there that far. Um, we do understand how to break this up, and the answer is we break it up by unit. We break it up by unit following the 5x5 five five heuristic. Um, and we need the core. The last thing that we're going to do, maybe we can get one slide out, even if I don't document it or anything. If we can get this core and then add in a unit and generate slides for that unit. Let's see if we can do that briefly. So control P, oh, uh, control P laterally read me. Here's laterally slides read me. Um, and laterally slides has the curriculum, but it does not have the core, nor should it. Because the concept of core is, for, is just a representation of the slideshow syntax, and that is for it, that is foreign. Do you think it's worth pursuing a career in tech with GPT on the rise? Yes, 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 yes. GPT is your friend, not your enemy. Get in here and code. Um, GPT is great. I'm not afraid of it. It's a super, it's super helpful. So I need to extract a core that shows GPT how to build slides, how I want to build my slides. And I have the benefit that GPT, at least GPT-4, is aware of Reveal.js. So it kind of understands the background syntax, or so I can assume. Uh, but there's too many tokens here. So let me just hold, um, yeah. I'll hold the table of contents. I think that's important to understand the units. It's going to represent the units. And then I can have sort of the first unit there only. Um, understanding them. And see, that's not great because my key points there has 11. Is that slide not overstuffed? Let me look at that. I don't, want, I don't want GPT to learn the representation that 11 bullets on a slide is chill, because it's not chill. It's, uh, that's bad. Laterally slides, curriculum details. Uh, okay. Because I have it set up on a action. Is that right? We have actions. Yeah. So my action is trying to build the pages deployment over here build and deploy, um, I need the action to target. Um, I need the action to target the curriculum markdown file now. Is it in my like workflow, GitHub, workflows, JS? Yeah, okay. Funding. Oh, that's me. Yeah, feel free to fund me, I guess. I don't even know how you can. <laughs> I'm the worst. Okay. Saw AI Hackathon on Discord. What is it? Um, Superbase.com has the details. You can check out the ladder lease. Unfortunately, you got here at the end of the stream, man. You can check out this repository, Vandiver slash Rect. Um, and then here... 
I need to drop a line about the super base. See, I did. This application is an entry into the back. Yeah, but I can link it. Super base AI hackathon. Rect readme. This application is an entry into the 2023 Superbase Hackathon on the theme of AI. And this will be a minor docs, uh, docs link Superbase. Um, here, run build if presence. Okay, so it's just running build. So then let me look at my build and my package.json. Package.json build is gulp build. Build. And where's my gulp file? Gulp, bro. What, what is this, 2018? 2018. Nowhere in here is even pointing to a readme. Gulp file. Here's a gulp file. We're really out here doing gulp files. Okay. Control F R E A D M E. It's not looking explicitly for readme. Markdown. Okay, so here's reveal markdown plugin. It's using this stuff, but how does it know to pick my readme as opposed to like any other file? Run Q, run Q unit puppeteer. That's wild. Okay, so it's sourcing from all the markdown files. Really? Uh, is that actually true? Laterally slides. No, there's only one slide here. I don't know why it thinks it's sourcing from all the markdown files. Um, let me look at my index file. That could be, okay, it could be looking at, it could be like looking at all the markdown files and not using them necessarily. So here's the index file. Yeah, that's what it is. It's looking at all the markdown files, but it's only gonna use the one that I specified. Uh, text area content is injected, cool, cool. Curriculum. Did I spell that? This is the worst word, curriculum. If it's wrong, it's at least consistently wrong. We love that. What are you doing, King? We're building um, slides and AI and I don't know, my brain's melting. Um, so here, feet. Uh, curriculum.md as root. This is the problem, right? When you get too into coding and then you're like, can't communicate with your people in your stream very well. <laughs> okay, so let me see if I can rephrase what I'm doing. I'm trying to get this GitHub action to build my site correctly. Currently, it has built these laterally slides which is just one slide, and it's building stuff I don't want it to build. I don't want it to build this. Um, what I want it to build, if I go to the laterally slides, I want it to build off of this curriculum.md file. So that's what I was doing just now. Is it React? Uh, no, I don't think this one uses React. And then how long does it take to build? Let's go look at the actions. So it's yellow, right? It's taking some time. Please don't do this on TikTok. Please, please, please go somewhere else. Ooh, ouch. Yeah, I'll be leaving soon. This is the end of the stream anyway. 
Okay, build pages and deployments. So here is the GitHub pages URL. Let's open that up. I'm going to open up DevTools and hard reload this page, empty cache and hard reload. And we can see now it's different. Okay. Um, and now it's, now it's better. So this is the slideshow that I want. And there's no, uh, no TikTok links. There's kind of like some weird uh, alignment on these subtitles, but I think that's something we can deal with a different day. Part two, the job search, the job search. Probably that doesn't need to be there. Hey, thanks for joining everyone. Actually, I do programming 10 hours a day and then watch TikTok for fun. It's a vibe. Which framework is this? This slideshow is built using Reveal.js. Um, oops, what did I just close? Yeah. Um, so you can see proudly built using Reveal.js. So you can click that to learn more. How to get this good at coding. It's all practice, yo. Thanks for being here. That's the end of the stream. Follow the page. That's how you get good at coding. You follow the page and then I can uh, give you all the tricks later, but I got to go for now.